After loading up MW2 to get my teeth kicked in by the Adderall taking, G Fuel drinking, monster chugging, Dorito crushing, future heart disease community, I was introduced with the title screen straight out of a Marvel movie, <clears throat> which started to get me thinking. Why is Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer so mid? Is it the garbage maps, the whack ass progression system, or even the lack of day one content? Yes, I listed off some of the negatives, but the game does have some positives, like the movement feels better than the beta, weapon kills feel super satisfying, sound design is incredible, just to name a few. But before we dive deeper into the madness of some lunatic with a microphone, let me preface by saying this. I'm aware I'm not good at Modern Warfare 2, I'd say I'm somewhere in the range of like average or casual, so if typing skill issue in the comments in response to criticism is what helps you get to sleep at night, then go for it. But for the time being, oh, suck a dick, suck a dick, suck a motherfucking dick. For your viewing pleasure, I've decided to divide up the video based off pros and cons because it's what I did in my don't buy video, which I feel like gives the video much needed structure, which is pretty much similar to a system quarterback. No offense to Tom Brady. Broncos country, let's ride. Pros, graphics. MW2 sees a significant improvement in the graphics department from its predecessor. If that shocks you at all, then you probably still believe your vote matters in this country. Shout out Kanye West. The game looks crisper with better attention to detail in some areas. Yes, Battlefield nerds, I understand the Blades of Grass aren't as detailed in Modern Warfare 2, but I'm satisfied with the game not looking like a Roblox mod, so eat me. Also, the color palette seems to be more colorful, which in comparison to Modern Warfare 2019, really didn't matter because really any improvement at all was better. Meaning, it doesn't look like you're walking around a hot topic. Movement. As someone who spoke about how the movement sucked in the beta, I was pleasantly surprised when the movement felt more smooth at launch, which I can hear the, see it's just a beta sayers out there, but we still have a slew of issues that existed during the beta that still haven't been fixed, so... Oh, suck a dick, suck a dick, suck a motherfucking dick, suck a dick! I've heard people say this is exactly like the movement of old school Call of Duties. I'm here to tell you that is wildly false. I would say it's a mixture of a new movement and old movement system, which is honestly kind of a good thing. Honestly, finding a way to get these movement systems to work together is pretty impressive if you ask me, so yeah. Gold Star. Improved perk system. As someone who complained about the perk system in the beta, it's starting to grow on me the more I've played the game. It's a great way for players to be on an even playing field at the very jump of the match, and the improved progression of earning perks in comparison to the beta does make this system work so much better. If you don't recall in the beta, perks were earned very slowly, where by the last two kills of the game, you finally got your final perk. This has since been improved with players being able to earn perks even quicker. Another bit of praise is how they laid out the perks, with the base perk tier being the get your feet wet tier. Bonus perks are the perks that help you achieve either more kill streaks or help with your current momentum, while ultimate perks are just purely crutch perks, the ones that you really need like Ghost or really any of those stupid ones, Last Stand, I don't know why you'd ever use it. Like I said, I was wrong about this system, and now that it finally works the way it was intended to, it works very well. Again, I'm an adult who loves to point out flaws and criticize pretty much everything, and I know when I am wrong, so I will admit it. I was totally wrong about this system, and it was probably one of the better additions to a Call of Duty title. There, are you happy? Guess what? I don't care. Camo progression. The grind is over. Hallelujah. If you haven't heard, which you probably have at this point, camo grinding is no longer a thing. In what is probably the greatest change in Call of Duty, unlocking camos has just gotten kind of a bit easier, with each weapon having at least four camo challenges to unlock gold. Once unlocking gold for all those guns, in certain classes, AR, SMG, etc., you unlock challenges for the platinum camo, and so on and so forth for the other two camos that exist. Again, this is a great change. The idea of camo grinding was awful, and I'm so happy they at least made it a bit easier to unlock camos, and it also feels a little bit less repetitive. Like, Oh, you got gold for your M4? Now do all 400 challenges again for the M13, or AK, or so on and so forth. Like, god, what a great change. How could you be mad at this at all? Hot mics and game chat. For all those Karens out there, I need you to listen. I know it's hard to listen to someone that's not yourself, and anyone on the view, but this is actually pretty important. The amount of debauchery happening in Call of Duty lobbies is out of control. Grown adults harassing kids over the internet about how they stink at a video game, and the incessant use of the n-word, all the swearing, cursing, and name calling, it's just, it's just, just brings a tear 
to my eye, you know? Like, we're back, baby. It's 2009 all over again, and I couldn't be more proud of this community. Seriously, the introduction of proximity chat in Warzone and DMZ, along with the pre and post game chat and hot mics, has been a joy to experience. From the constant abuse of players in the online community to whatever else you may find in the wild, wild west of online communication is just a beautiful experiment of how humans are unhinged when it comes to the internet. It's just magical. Like, um, for the sake of not, you know, being sued by a talking mouse, I won't even attempt to finish the joke. One thing I've been doing in lobbies that's just brought me some entertainment is just in the post game, repeating to the other team over and over that they're trash at the game and should be embarrassed, and then just let them freak out, which is kind of magical in a way. It's very fun to listen to. Kill streaks. The kill streaks in Modern Warfare 2 feel very satisfying. Nothing feels insanely overpowered, though I must say there are some that are pretty damn useless. I'm looking at you, bomb drone, you useless fuck. Need to mention the obvious. The tactical nuke, if you get it, it is truly the most satisfying thing I have ever experienced in a video game. Even getting nuked in this game, I can't even be mad. Like, my face got kicked in for 10 minutes, that's okay, like, I just got to sit back and appreciate something so visually beautiful, yet so horrifying. I can't be mad at all. Third person mode. During the beta, I praised the third person mode, especially because I felt like it was going to be hot garbage. But to my surprise, it was the best game mode in the entire beta, let alone the entire game. It adds a bit of diversity to the game, which is much needed, while also feeling similar to the Gears of War days of old. Meaning, standing around a corner with a shotgun. They made a change in which you can no longer go from third person to first person when ADSing, which is honestly when it was announced, it rustled my jimmies a bit, but I think this was a very smart change as it kind of helps the overall gameplay. Fun. Before I hit the cons, and trust me, there's a lot of cons. MW2, for what it's worth, is fun? Regardless of how much I bitch and complain and think this is nothing more than the Marvel movie of Call of Duty games, I, I have to say that the multiplayer... For all of its flaws, and for what it's worth, most of this probably being fixable or unfixable, the game is fun. I haven't been this sucked into a Call of Duty game since World War II, and before that, Modern Warfare 2, which I'm not sure if that's because I'm actually enjoying the game or just trying to justify my purchase of $100. Not proud of it, but I was pretty hyped for the game back in June. So, again, the game's pretty fun. I guess, whatever. Cons. Lack of content. Modern Warfare 2 has a content problem. Yes, Season 1 is here and added some stuff, but even that's not enough. Modern Warfare 2 has a lot of guns, but they're literally the same gun with a different skin and a different class. At launch, the game had 10 maps, whereas Vanguard had 16, which is almost as embarrassing as shitting yourself. Not talking from my own personal experience, though. I'm also not counting the ground war and invasion maps because it's literally the war zone map broken up into smaller maps while also containing multiplayer maps. So, sorry, that doesn't really count. If you really want me to be generous, I guess I could give them one because it might not be in Warzone. We could have gotten 11 maps, but one was removed, that being the museum map, because the location is actually based off a real place that didn't want its location featured in a first-person shooter video game. We saw something similar with the Raceway map, having all of its promotional material being ripped from the internet and being probably burned in some alleyway. With the map going through some sort of rework to remove certain material that could relate to the real life location, while also changing the map name or something. Apparently the real life location where the hotel map is, that seems like most people hate, is also pushing back on being featured in the game, and has the potential of being removed from the overall game. Listen, I get it, if I were the owner of one of these locations, I probably wouldn't want my place of business, so to speak, being featured in a video game like this. Known for unaliving other people in a video game, yes it's a video game, but the current state of the world, it's not something I would personally want for my own personal brand. Not to mention with the people probably loitering around my business while giving me pretty much nothing other than attention that probably I don't really need. Also, I'm not a lawyer in any way, but I'm not sure how this works with like public property, private property, and how domain and everything else works. I don't know if they have to reach out and whatever else, but it seems like they had to and they didn't which seems like a bit of an oversight on the developer's part, as you would think they would try to reach out to these places and say, hey, can we use your place of business in this game? No? Cool, let's find something else. Yet that still leaves us with a content issue. Me personally, I find the lack of content available to be more embarrassing than a Mark Sanchez butt fumble. And apparently next year they're going to be releasing more content, that being like a campaign, multiplayer content, which I've heard at least a little bit is just going to be a bunch of remastered maps, and whatever else, 
for $70. That is absurd, especially after this launch and the amount of available content in comparison to the years prior. That is highway robbery. That is stealing. That is theft. That is ridiculous. I cannot believe the developers would even consider doing something like that. We shouldn't have to pay that much money. We shouldn't have to pay for remasters at all if that's the case. The content should be free. Well, we are at least owed a little bit more content, especially from what we've gotten in the years prior. Oh, another thing. NW2 didn't launch with a hardcore mode. Isn't that insane? It dropped with Season 1 as Tier 1 mode. Like, how could something like this not be added to the game, at least for launch? Oh, and speaking of another thing that involves lack of content. No leaderboards. Segways. The fact that leaderboards or a combat record didn't arrive until Season 1 is a joke. I'm sorry, but that has to be more embarrassing than Mark Sanchez butt fumble. Live with it, Mark. It happened. While some people may say it's not a big deal, and I bet you wouldn't even have noticed or looked, well guess what? I did notice at launch, and was blown away that such a small addition or feature couldn't be in the game. Something that's been a staple since like, what, Modern Warfare 2007 if not earlier, wasn't in one of the biggest Call of Duty titles ever. How? How is that something that even happens? It's like they went, ah well, we'll just add it later and they'll be fine with it. That's the mentality we're dealing with. Leaderboards are a minuscule feature, sure. But then why not just have them at the launch of the game? Until Season 1 launched, I kept just going, Well, I wish I could see my combat record. Oh, I wish I could see where I stand the leaderboards. What an absolute miss, if you ask me. And granted, yes, I'm complaining about a small feature. It shouldn't matter. But that's a big deal. The small features are what really matters at the end of the day. If you missed a small feature in a game like this... What else did you miss? Time to kill. Not gonna go into too much detail here, but the time to kill feels a bit fast. I kind of go back and forth on if that's a good thing or bad thing. I'd probably say if they make it more like the Black Ops 2 time to kill, I feel like that would be the best frame of reference for it. I, I feel like that's probably the best time to kill to put in, so yeah. Skill-based matchmaking. I was wrong, okay? Skill-based matchmaking still exists in Modern Warfare 2, and not long after making this video, I started to notice more and more of my lobbies become filled with a bunch of uber tryhards. And while I still see a bit of variety in terms of skill level, that lasts maybe one or two matches a week, and then I'm stuck in a pool of sweats putting on their best performance as if they're going to be one of the possible candidates to replace Scumpy at the end of the Call of Duty season. Don't get me wrong, skill-based matchmaking is a good and bad thing. It helps protect lesser skilled players from guys like me or some pros who will kick the ever-loving crap out of them. But I feel like there needs to be some sort of middle. Like, the players that quite literally have no thumbs to play the game at all should be left in lobbies as such. I'm talking about the ones that are just running straight into a wall and somehow can't shoot someone that has just been standing still for at least 10-20 minutes right in front of them. Protect those players, but the players that are about average, slightly below average, casuals or pros, whatever, pull them together, diversify your games, because I experience a lot of these games with the same people over and over and over again. Not to mention the people you are protecting probably aren't spending as much money as the people that aren't being protected at all. Just saying. Oh, by the way, stop fucking disbanding lobbies. It's stupid. It takes away a huge part of what makes the game fun, which is the game chat element. Post-game lobbies would be so much more fun if we could actually sit in a post-game lobby waiting for the next match to load up, which you outright said you were going to fix and still to this day have not seen. I have not seen the effect of that at all. Gunsmith. I've always been a big naysayer of the new gunsmith mechanic. It offers way too many variables leading to metas. I'd also guess from a developer standpoint, in, in terms of balancing at least, it's a nightmare. Though I'm not sure if they even care because metas seem to be the very thing that seems to help the game rather than hurt it in a weird way mainly due to the amount of attention that kind of stuff draws. But the Gunsmith 2.0 is a clusterfuck to understand, and from the amount of attachments and how to unlock them, not to mention how you unlock weapons, is more confusing than ever before. But instead of just, just telling you about it, allow me to show you. So when you load into Gunsmith 2.0, you're probably going to be met with some sort of glitch that shows an entirely different gun than what is set in your primary slot. But in order to really understand how Gunsmith 2.0 works, I might as well just show you, like I said earlier. So let's just say you're going to create a class. I'm going to use the base M4. Again, you're still seeing the glitch in which it shows an AK-47, for God knows what reason. So let's say you're trying to build an M4 class. This is what your basic M4 is going to look like. You have all your different attachment slots here. So hypothetically, I'm going to pick a muzzle and want to just put on a random muzzle. Obviously, I have all these unlocked. 
But let's say I want to put on the Coloss Flash Hider or something. At least based off what the challenge is, you have to unlock it by using the 545 and getting it to level 16. So instead of using the gun that I'm actually using now and just what was the traditional system of using the M4 to let's say rank 30 to get this Flash Hider, I instead have to then stop what I'm doing, go over to a different gun, meaning the 545, and get it to level 16, which seems kind of dumb. I don't understand that, but let's hypothetically say I don't have the 545. So the main gun, which is, I believe, the 762, let's say you get that at level 20. I don't know, hypothetically here. You get that at level 20. So you have that gun, but here's the problem. Because you don't have the 545 right out the gate. It's not part of the normal leveling system. It's this new Castovia platform or different platforms for each gun. Each M4 has a different platform, etc. So you go over here, press, for me, it's the middle button where you end up seeing your entire platform tree, which based off getting at level two, meaning the 762, that'll unlock the 545 and then unlocking eventually the 774U and then the mini Bach and the 9K and the RPK, various weapons within this platform. This is such a clusterfuck to navigate, by the way. I'm pressing up on my analog stick in order to go up and down between each thing. But then you have this weird system of like, if I go down too much, it'll get me all the way back to the mini Bach. It is terrible to navigate. Not the worst thing. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I can see the track of how long it's going to take me to get through all this and see all the attachments I unlock. But to do this, to figure out what attachments exist within this skill tree and this weapon unlock is a bitch to figure out. It is awful. It sucks to navigate. This is the most horribly optimized thing I have ever seen in my entire life. It's basically then telling you what attachments you can unlock for all your other guns in general. This isn't just like a thing that exists like if you unlock these attachments it exists within the AK. No, no, no. It exists overall. Like I showed you earlier, this exists for every single one, which someone's going to make the argument. Well, it's the same thing for camos. Not really. I want to get like what? Four challenges or like, yeah, four different challenges in order to get like a certain camo that I want. That's actually a lot better than doing the same challenge over and over and over again. Where instead, all I have to do is just use this gun and get up to, what, rank 50, what it was like before? That's not terrible. I would rather have a gun go from level 1 to 50 and use that gun and abuse that gun and just get attachments for it because it feels like I actually earned it in comparison to a camo, which is completely grindy and obnoxious. You're doing, like, the, it's literally the same challenge 100 times. I'd rather have various challenges over, you know, the course of different weapons. Four challenges makes it a lot better, and I think it makes the overall game feel smarter. But... Besides the point, I think this system fucking blows. It is a nightmare to understand. It's a nightmare to navigate. It's just, it is, and also a very complicated system to truly understand. I mean, it makes no, it just, this is a disaster to figure out, and it sucks. Also, there's another thing that exists within the game called weapon tuning. So let's go back to our M4. Let's pick a muzzle. I think it's like really any muzzle. I don't know. So you can actually tune your weapons based off what you want. So do you want slightly better ADS? Sure, you can do that. You can focus more on your ADS. Do you want recoil smoothness? Sure, you can do that. But it increases your weight of your gun, so it makes you a little bit slower. So you're, you're getting a bit of a trade-off. But this is stupid. So then all these pros and cons don't matter at all. So why have all these cons? Like if It's just a dumb system. Why have pros and cons? Why have any of this, the differences in any of this, if you're going to add a tuning system? It's dumb. It's a st just a stupid, stupid system that they literally took out of the game, and it actually felt like it was unnoticeable. I didn't even know they took it out of the game until one day I was on Twitter and saw an entire thing that was like, hey, by the way, we're adding tuning back. I was like, it left? Really? Like, come on. This is, this is awful. This is such a terrible, confusing system. And, like, it makes no sense. Just, again, navigating this skill tree that apparently they were fixing from the beta is terrible. It's so bad. I don't, I don't understand who designed this. But even, again, to see the track of what each gun does is so stupid. It is so weird to get here. And it would just be a lot easier if you just did 1 through 50. It would make more sense that way. The UI. Whoever designed this UI needs to be fired. What was ever wrong with this UI? Explain that to me. The current MW2 UI is just a mess to navigate. Going from window to window can feel like more of a chore than something that is meant to be seamless. I saw people say, you get used to it, but you really don't. 
It's more of a hassle, and you can fix this. I mean, there are people literally coming up with better UIs on Reddit, for God's sakes. Like, what the fuck? Did no one playtest it at all? I mean, I get from the beta you couldn't make many changes. We knew that because, again, the beta is pretty much the final product, and changing a whole UI takes time. But for God's sakes, please rework this disaster. It's awful. Apparently, the people who made this monstrosity at some point worked at Hulu doing their UI, which... I guess makes sense because Hulu's UI is a fucking disaster to navigate in itself. So just please take the time to, to fix this. It Just save us all that. Spawns. Getting shot in the back when you respawn has sort of become a Call of Duty tradition. Like a fat guy coming down your chimney or Kirk Cousins sucking in prime time. With every Call of Duty, you can always bet on a couple maps with bad spawns. But Modern Warfare 2? My god. Does this have some of the worst spawns in any game I have ever seen? The amount of times I've spawned in to only have an enemy stand pretty much right next to me or vice versa and kill me or again vice versa is insane. I know this is one of my beta complaints and the fact that it wasn't fixed isn't surprising at all but it's safe to say the current spawns in Modern Warfare 2 are the worst they have ever been. Camping. Camping in Modern Warfare 2 might be the worst I've ever seen in a Call of Duty title ever before. That sounds like more of an overdramatic statement to make but it's really not. Camping in Modern Warfare 2 is fueled by a couple things, no red dots on the minimap, map design, and the amounts of kills to get a kill streak. Issues like this are easily fixable, and they cause players to play extremely passively, and is camping a legitimate strategy? Yes, but when 90% of the lobby is pitching tents and waiting for someone around the corner, the overall game suffers, whether you think it or not. Games end up becoming more longer and more boring, and it doesn't really do a good job of keeping the attention of the player base, shout out people with ADD. The bigger issue is that the developers designed the game to cater to this one playstyle, which I guess calling them campers is no longer the politically correct term. Instead, they're called sentinels or some bullcrap. Again, it's better to create a better balanced game between the different playstyles instead of creating a game catered to the people that are sitting in a corner, checking the stock market, and watching the entirety of the Infinity Stone saga. Oh, and before I uh, go any further, I already know what I'm about to hear. <clears throat> I'll take skill issue, and guess what I say? Suck a dick, suck a dick, suck a motherfucking dick, suck a dick, suck a huge or small dick. Length of play. Games in Modern Warfare 2 take a stupid long time. A major point of this is camping, but also, I've never understood why the developers changed TDM from 75 kills to 100 kills. Well, I get it in the sense that it allows players, to, gives them more time at least, to get their kill streaks, but why not just lower the amount of kills to get a kill streak? Like, four kills for a UAV is stupid. If it's a balancing thing, guess what? It's not really working. Everyone's popping UAVs like, I don't know, Adderall or something. I'm betting the longer the game, the lesser your engagement time is because from my own experiences, the games that I feel like they drag out longer leads me to probably play maybe one game and then end up stacking my franchise mode with Legends and MLB The Show. Footsteps. You still sound like Lardex Maximus when you move, which makes being killed when no UAV is up all the more irritating. Even if you feel like you have the drop on your opponents, guess what? You probably don't. And they are probably sitting in a corner with an Astro A1000s and just enjoying life. DLC weapon unlocks. And what could be the dumbest ass decision a developer's ever made? With Season 1 recently dropping, came a couple new weapons, those being the Bass P and the M13B. The Bass P isn't very hard to unlock since it's in the Battle Pass, but the M13 is unlockable via DMZ only by unaliving someone named the Chemist and extracting with the gun. Being honest, I played all but one match and said this probably isn't for me and stopped playing. I'll probably go back at some point, but who knows. I don't find DMZ all that interesting, and that's okay. The issue here is that you've locked a DLC weapon behind some game mode that most people may not even play, making it so goddamn unfair for those of us that just want to be able to compete with the tryhard snorting Adderall like it's, um, brocane. It's pretty well known amongst the player base when a new gun comes out, it's usually one of the most broken guns in the game. You'll also be rustled by the fact that there isn't anything via the battle pass to unlock the M13, leaving you with two options. One, earn it by playing a game mode that you may not even like. Just a reminder, it's not a guarantee you'll get it because everyone and their mother is also trying to get it. Or, two, B, eventually just buy the blueprint when it eventually comes out. I don't understand why you would make a challenge for a specific game mode that is catered to a certain kind of player base. Put it in the multiplayer, where everyone's probably going to play it and still try to get it. 
Though I can probably hear people saying and making a fair argument, well, what about me? What about those of us that don't like the multiplayer? Then make three challenges, with any of the three challenges being options to unlock the weapon. One for Warzone, one for DMZ, and one for multiplayer. That way it's not centric to one game mode that may not be for you and it's not locked behind some sort of paywall. But with this challenge currently existing, I must say one big fuck you to Activision and Infinity Ward for this decision, and also, speaking of fuck yous, a quick update. I played one more game, not trying to obtain the M13, but just for some sort of future DMZ video. Much to my luck, when I reached the Xville, some rando was in the chopper with the M13B, who I killed and allowed me to unlock it. So thank you for this rando sacrifice, but sorry for the lack of footage, by the way, because... I don't know, it was pretty much on the fly, and uh, another sorry to the teammate I left behind, but regardless, still fuck the developers for making this a challenge. It's absolutely stupid, and it should be criminal. Aim Assist. The Aim Assist in Modern Warfare 2 is pretty ridiculous. Plenty of videos are out there showing you just how rough it can be, but it kind of feels like people have a sort of Walmart version of an aimbot now, so that kind of sucks. The SPR. If you use this, you have a tiny peepee. -pee. What amazes me the most isn't Kyler Murray's stats during Double XP Weekend, instead the people that use this seem to be the same people over and over again, meaning the ones that bunny hop around on the map, like Jeffrey Dahmer has their entire family locked up or something. Or, they're one of those people who just say, ooh woo, after every sentence unironically. The gun, once things are pretty much unlocked, is a one-shot kill anywhere, making it not very fun to go up against. Will they patch it? Probably, it's probably been patched by now, but... For now, my god, is this the most annoying thing ever. The community. The community is at fault for Modern Warfare 2's woes. That's right, it's you. From surfing the interwebs, it seems like any criticism of Modern Warfare 2 is met with skill issue, L-take, or some other weak defense. Most will end up just defending the game saying, this game is fun bro, L-take, wants to be different, or something along that line, though fun doesn't actually mean that it's good. The worst game imaginable can be fun just based off how you actually experience it. Whether that be with some friends or some group of randos ripping each other apart in the game chat, I've played a lot of stinkers in my time, and I've had fun just based off the ways I've experienced it. Again, Modern Warfare 2's fun, but it's not a good game by any means. I mean, the video game industry as a whole falls under this umbrella of the service industry. Much like getting your hair cut, you're not going to tell the person that does cut your hair they did a great job after you showed them a picture of a fade, instead they end up giving you a bowl cut. No, you're not going to tell them that. You're not going to say, oh, great job. You're going to tell them that's not what you asked for. I'm saying criticism is a good thing. You're paying money for a service that's absent of key features that really have no excuse for not being there, or a game that's catered to one particular group of people. MW2 is a very flawed game. It's fun, but it's not great. So by criticizing the developers and maybe we can actually do something and see some improvements, maybe. I don't know, but if not, then I guess fuck us, whatever. My point is, I'm here to criticize. That's what I do. But I also implore all of you to criticize the game yourselves. Even if you're having fun, I guarantee you there are features that you are like, I kind of wish this was in the game. And if you do that, and if you put some criticism in there, Maybe they will listen and actually do something about it. I mean, there's a, again, there's a lot of features and a lot of things that aren't really here that I feel like a lot of us have been begging for. Conclusion. As mentioned, Modern Warfare 2 is a flawed game. With the possibly 11 studios that worked on this game and what, 20 other games for them to at least reference, the developers have very few excuses to not make this one of the best titles possible, which leads to the greatest rebuttal of all time. Why don't you end up making a game? Well, unfortunately, I didn't attend a college with a four-year program in video game development. You know what I went to college for? Creative writing. Except, I dropped out after a week because I was told it would require me having a higher math course to get into the English writing course or something. I don't know either. That makes no sense at all. But, a man with some ideas, damn it, and I'm going to share them. To be clear, you should treat the next bit as some sort of review while also providing some sort of constructive criticism for the developers. And I also doubt they'll listen to me, you know, because why not? But hey, it's worth a shot. Features that are things you probably don't care about, but maybe care about. One, provide a campaign with clear villains, better setup, and consistent gameplay mechanics. I've made an entire video on this, but to better describe this campaign, it's a story that is basically setup for setup. Villains are very weak, level design can be pretty boring, with inconsistent gameplay mechanics that show up maybe once, while also adding these mechanics to show off something that would probably be in future modes. But guess what? They didn't do that. Not at least what we thought they would do. Two, add another co-op mode with Spec Ops. Spec Ops in Call of Duty is usually a pretty weak game mode, 
MW2 is no different. It can be at least interesting for about a blink of an eye, but then it becomes more stale than an open box of crackers. I'd say zombies is the best thing to combine it with, and I would make sure this is something that exists at launch, providing both a new school map and game mode with an old school map and game mode. Meaning arcade based round based shooter crap versus horde round based stuff if that makes sense to you at all. Features for multiplayer. 1. Players that fire a weapon appear on mini maps like they have for every Call of Duty except for this one. This will help limit the amount of camping which will hopefully increase the pace of play and provide a use for suppressors. 2. A better mix of map design. Assuming that 16 maps can be considered some sort of standard, this is my proposal, shout out Ryan Reynolds, for the mix of maps. 8 3 lane maps, 1 close quarters map, think shipment, 2 remasters that are picked by the player base in early development that are only graphically tweaked because I haven't forgiven you for what you did to crash, 2 campy maps, these are just kind of more gravitated towards the play style of the sentinels, though three lane maps can be kind of like offer some sort of camping you know whatever two large maps think afghan euphrates bridge whatever something along that line i don't know and one wide open map i.e wasteland or tarak this way you have enough map diversity while also not entirely banking on nostalgia to design these maps i suggest playing the 200 maps that have been released since the inception of the call of duty brand but speaking of nostalgia, three, stop banking off nostalgia. Listen, I'm all for seeing maps that used to make me hate myself, but it's giving players little new to experience. Season one is going to feature two remasters, and that is it for new maps. Additionally, the remasters we are getting are the same ones over and over and over again. Maybe evaluate the maps you're remastering and figure what it is that made these maps so beloved, and then build ones at least somewhat similar to that and just go from there. 4. Bring back map voting. Map voting is a great tool to not only give players the option to decide what maps they want to play on, but also maybe provide some sort of feedback to the developers. If you're seeing one map get voted 90% of the time, then there's also a map that's being voted maybe like 10% of the time. Maybe it's good to go back and figure out how you want to rework the map so players maybe actually want to play it. 5. Gunsmith is purely cosmetic. If Gunsmith were purely cosmetic, I feel like newer Call of Duty titles would have less problems. On the developer end, it would probably make patches a lot easier and a lot quicker to release. Hopefully, at least to some degree. And on the player side, it would be less overwhelming trying to figure out what the different stats are, while also creating a more balanced game overall, eliminating the frequent metas. Sorry to, you know, the creators who make a living off the meta shit. Six, less attachments. The less attachments, the better. As mentioned, the more attachments that exist, it makes Gunsmith feel a little bit more overwhelming. A good game to reference is maybe World War II, that I feel like is the right amount of attachments per weapon, maybe even Black Ops 2, with each attachment having a variety in its customization options, which will come in kind of ties with Gunsmith and being a cosmetic only thing. 7. Return to the gun ranks of old. The current weapon leveling attachment progression unlock system is chaotic and it's confusing to follow. Revert back to the old weapon progression of old. It's just, it was a lot easier to follow. 8. Blueprints work for every attachment. Though it's kind of a thing, just make it so that every attachment is customizable in some capacity based off whatever blueprint you unlock. So say you buy a blueprint with a stock and a barrel, having a cosmetic change, the same look should exist for every other attachment, that way it doesn't look like you're kind of Frankensteining your weapon. 9. Keep the current camo progression. One of my favorite things about Modern Warfare 2 is how they remove the camo grind. This current system feels a bit more rewarding, and also feels less of, what have I done with my life? But, you know, sorry nerds. It also feels like there are way more camos, which is pretty sweet. 10. More weapon variety. This might just be a me thing, but I don't care if a Modern Warfare game is using weapons from, say, World War II, World War I. Hell, I don't even care if they use something from, like, the Civil War. I just want to see more than an M4 and its variants. Give me some variety. If it's not too realistic, who gives a fuck? At the end of the day, it's a video game in which people shoot at each other, respawn, and probably scream racial slurs at one another. Have a bit of fun with it. If it's a musket with an infrared scope, who cares? Just provide more content than an AK or an M4 12 times in every single class. 11. Stop disbanding lobbies. Disbanding lobbies is such a stupid feature, words may not even be able to describe just how stupid it is for a game and its player base. Video games are about community and being able to interact within that community. By removing it, in a way, you're removing the sense of community. I mean, can it be toxic? Sure. But post-game lobbies are just that much better to help your engagement. 
having a bit of that toxicity where players just trash talk one another can fuel players to play at least one, two, three more games because it helps drive a bit of that competitiveness into the lobbies. And nothing feels better than getting some trash talker to shut up after dunking on his team like you're LeBron James or something. Y'all better recognize. 12. Maintain the current perk system, but add pro perks. I've always loved the pro perk system. It adds more for the players to do while also adding a bit of reward for your time using a specific perk. And I think the current perk system works very well when you have it the current way it's set up. 13. Ninja is added as a perk. Not sure what the decision was to taking this out of the game, but... There really isn't any reason at all. It doesn't really make a player's footsteps dead silent. It only kind of just lowers the volume a little bit. And uh, kind of speaking of, 14, lower the fucking footstep volume. Jesus Christ, it's a video game in which I need to move around. Like, why do I need to sound like an elephant running around on a third floor of a colonial house? The fuck? 15, field upgrades. Honestly, it's rather useless if you're running with the entire current perk system, as it feels like it's more of just the same. You can kind of branch a lot of the stuff into equipment or pro perks or other things like that. 16, lower the kill streak earn rates. Maybe go like one or two down for each kill streak because four kills for a UAV is just dumb. I mean, again, it doesn't, it's not solving anything. 17, create a game mode for 100 kill TDM and 75 kill TDM. That way it creates a good middle. Thanks, love you, bye. 18. Fix your aim assist. I don't know. Maybe any other Call of Duty is a good reference point. I don't know. Thanks. Love you. Bye. 19. Add an HQ like World War II had, allowing players to interact with one another. Again, you want that sense of community back. The HQ in World War II was one of the best features in Call of Duty that we have yet to see come back for no reason at all. I would imagine it's hard to make. I guess that's probably what it is and to maintain, but it was great to have all the contracts all the different challenges, the daily challenges. It's a great feature to keep players constantly engaged in your game, which is at the end of the day, what you need, because that will also help drive more sales in your microtransactions, because that's at the, at the end of the day, that's what you want. 20, get rid of skill-based matchmaking. For the love of God, I get it exists to protect the lesser skilled players, as mentioned, though the ones that need protecting are the players that quite literally couldn't kill a guy standing in place AFK for 30 minutes. You shouldn't be essentially punishing everyone else for them being that bad. Protect the ones that are truly so bad they make Zach Wilson look like an MVP candidate. But everyone else, mix them in lobbies, and that is it. It actually makes the entire experience vastly more enjoyable with all the different play styles. 21, bring back the old prestige system for the love of God. I don't get why this ever left, and I'm talking about like old prestige system. Like start them from rank one and make them go all the way back up to 55, 60, whatever your rank is, your cap off. And I'm saying like no more prestige tokens that allows them to bring a gun or a perk or anything like that for long for the ride. Like let them test out their skills, bring some of that challenge back to the players a little bit. And if you want go maybe 15 prestiges at the base game and every single season that comes out do five to ten different prestiges added on to the game i don't know it's something better than the current system that is just so boring and not fulfilling as a player to keep me playing at all again you want more engagement you want more attention these things will help you. Like I said, Modern Warfare 2 isn't a bad game. The multiplayer can be fun at times, though I feel like it has a lot of issues that I feel like can hurt the overall experience. My suggestions might be good or bad. I honestly have no idea. Who really cares? I would love to know what you think of Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer and the overall experience. Have you found it anywhere close to enjoyable? Also, let me know some things that you feel like would at least help Call of Duty in the long term. But I'd like to say thanks for watching. If any of what I said offends you at all, then please drive down to your local Burger King and order something off the menu. That means eat shit. If you enjoyed the video, well, great. Leave a like, maybe subscribe. And if you didn't, well, I'll just give a call to Milf Hunter Wilson to come down and become your new stepdad or something. Not so bad because he's probably like the future GOP candidate. So, well, bye.